Hello today, another real world test. Today we're doing on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus, and there are actually some kind of important changes this year over last year's model. But we will explore, as per the usual, all while we test out this phone. But first things first. <laughs> Coffee. Check. Today, we're down in the financial district, or FIDI, starting at a coffee shop called Split Eights. Now, it's named for the dual functionality of the bar, playing off the blackjack term, which is the rule that if you are given two eight cards, you should split the hand into two hands and get a new card with each eight, as your odds are better than hitting or staying with a hand of 16. And maybe it also is a play on the fact that it's a split level space. Now in the morning, it's a coffee shop, but at night, it turns into a cocktail bar. Co-owners Jesse Che and Michael Klein also apparently split their talents, with Che covering the coffee business in the morning and Klein tending to the bar business at night. The two met while working for a culinary agency that helps create new restaurants called Matter House. One of them has the bar director and one is the coffee director, and they decided to open a location of their own. Klein has said that we want to be viewed as a cocktail bar in the evening and a coffee coffee cafe in the morning, not just one restaurant that's trying to do everything. Now, the original plan was for the location to open in March of 2020, but of course, the pandemic set everything back. After a trial attempt to open in October 2020, where they were able to be open for a few months, but they weren't able to stay open because of the cost and lack of outdoor dining, they eventually fully opened in April 2021. And while we're here, let's talk about the S24 Plus's design. We have flat sides now compared to the curved ones from last year, which feels very iPhone-like, but I like the squared off look personally, so I like it. The bigger difference probably here, though, is the fact that the phone screen is now 6.7 inches instead of the 6.6 .6 inches of last year and is now just 0.1 inch shy of the S24 Ultra screen size. We also have a higher resolution of Quad HD Plus, which is the same as the S24 Ultra. And we also now have an LTPO display, which I did a decoder episode on my explainer series here on the channel on how that works if you want to deep dive into that. But suffice it to say that it means that the display on the S24 Plus can go from 120 hertz refresh rate for smoother scrolling and animations down to one hertz to save power based on what's on the screen instead of the 48 hertz from last year. Again, same as the S24 Ultra this year. We also get a brighter 2600 nit display in direct sunlight compared to the 1750 nits of last year, and that is across all of the S24 lineup. Now, what you don't get on the Plus that you do get on the Ultra this year is the new Gorilla Glass Armor that has an anti-glare property, which a lot of people like, myself included, to make it easier to see the screen. One other thing to point out about the design for anyone deciding between the Plus and the Ultra is that the Ultra, of course, has the included S Pen that you don't get here. So if you want that that badly, that kind of ends the choice for you right there. Speaking of the phone's design, the Rudolf de Haruk digital clock here is an interesting piece of history in the world of design and technology. Now, back in the 1970s, Rudolf de Haruk, a renowned graphic designer who has done hundreds of paperback covers for McGraw-Hill, the popular education-focused publishing company, illustrations for Esquire magazine, jazz covers for record labels like Columbia Records, and he also designed the placards for the Egyptian wing of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which are still being used today. But he really wanted to make his mark on the digital clock scene, as you know, everybody dreams of. In the 1960s, he created smaller clock designs that are now in the permanent collection of the New York Museum of Modern Art, and then in 1971, he unveiled the Rudolf de Haruk digital clock, which at the time was the largest clock in the world. One of the standout features of the de Haruk digital clock was its use of LED technology. This was a cutting edge move at the time when most clocks were still running on analog mechanisms. The clock is laid out as a grid of numbers, 1 through 12 for the hours of the day, and then 0 through 59 for the minutes and the seconds. The numbers light up whenever it is their time, the hours in red, the minutes in blue, and the seconds 
in green. Speaking of RGB though, let's use the clock here to talk about the cameras on the S24 Plus. And frankly, there hasn't been a lot of hardware changes from last year's S23 Plus. We have the same ultra wide camera that is a one by 2.55 inch sensor with 1.4 micron sized pixels. The same 50 megapixel F1.8 aperture one by 1.56 inch sensor, Samsung ISOCELL GN3 with one micron size pixels that are binned in sets of two by two to get a 12 megapixel image with two micron size pixels. Yes, that math doesn't math but for some reason it removes 0.5 megapixels that should be there, so I don't know. And then the same S5K 3K1 sensor, same from the S21 Ultra, by the way, and it's a three times optical telephoto lens with a 10 megapixel f2.4 aperture and one by 3.94 inch sensor with one micron sized pixels. Now, as usual, the hardware only tells part of the story and Samsung has yet again updated their image processing pipeline and the look, which you can see the difference between the S24 Plus and S23 Plus photos and videos and all the other phones in this video throughout this video for yourself. And lastly, we have the same 12 megapixel front facing camera from last year that is still in all of the S24 series. Now, something that you don't get here versus the Ultra is the 200 megapixel larger main sensor and apparently larger sensor for the three times it seems. And of course, that five times optical sensor that we have in the S24 Ultra that's new this year and has 50 megapixels so that it can get 10 times photos pretty decently by cropping out the middle of that sensor, all of which you can see the real world differences here. Personally, I love the 5X and the 10X zooms on the Ultra myself but you are paying a decent amount more for them, of course. The Press Room, which is a museum slash bar slash letterpress print shop inside the Alamo Drafthouse Cinema here in Fidei. Now back when people use the newspaper to find out what new films were playing, production companies would take out ads in the paper to serve as mini movie posters to advertise upcoming films. These were printed using large blocks on a letterpress. Now when newspapers stopped using letterpress ads, this whole collection here eventually went to a local antique store. In 1999, the collection of over 50,000 blocks was bought by Marilyn Wagner and DJ Ginsburg, who spent 15 years indexing and restoring the collection, which contained the history of over 50 years of cinema from the 1930s to the 1980s. The collection was appraised in 2015 as being worth up to $12 million. Now, Alamo Drafthouse founder and CEO Tim League saw a documentary in 2017 about this archive called The Collection at South by Southwest and decided he wanted to buy it. He got in touch with the director of the short documentary as he was leaving the theater after watching it, trying to get in touch with Wagner and Ginsburg, and ensured them that it would go to someone who would actually do something with the archive. In 2019, they made a deal and a team from Alamo took four days to pack up the tens of thousands of plates to ship them from Nebraska to here in New York City. The press room opened inside this Alamo location in 2021, displaying hundreds of letterpress blocks as a museum with occasionally rotating different ones in and out. They also offer prints for purchase made using a vintage 1932 Vendor Cook letterpress. Clearly, we've come a long way from letterpress posters, and while we can't do an S24 Plus review without talking about the new Galaxy AI feature Samsung has been pushing on the S24 series even before the launch. I apologize if you watched my S24 Ultra real world test, linked below if you haven't, but the features are identical across all of the S24 lineup, so there's going to be some overlap. But that is again good to know that these features are not a factor when choosing between the S24 phones, unlike what Google did with limiting features on the Pixel 8 versus the Pixel 8 Pro for seemingly no reason other than to give the Pro more features than the 8. Regardless, we have the same AI AI features on the S24 Plus as we do on the S24 and the S24 Ultra. Firstly, we have live translate for phone calls. So basically you select languages that you and the other caller speak and then call someone and it initially lets them know on the other end that you're using a translator service, which is important because as with all translations, the flow isn't gonna be quite the same as a real conversation, even if it is pretty quick. Uh, then it can translate whatever either of you say into the other person's language in text and with voice. There's also a feature I just discovered, which if you're like me and hate unwarranted phone calls, you can then tap call a 
assist, then text call, and it'll just turn whatever the person on the other end says into text and whatever I type in response into speech. Kind of love that. Then we have an interpreter split screen app, very similar to Google Translate, that is a similar translation thing, but for people in person instead of over the phone. We have Live Translate for messaging apps, where you can tap languages to have it add text next to the original text of the messages, and it works in various messaging apps, not just text messaging. Also, while using the Samsung keyboard, you can use a Grammarly-like feature to scan your messages before you send it for spelling and grammar mistakes, and then just tap Insert to swap it out. Then we have Transcript Assist for the voice recording app, which brings Google Voice Recorder features to Samsung devices, finally. So, similar to that app on Pixel devices, you can record lectures or interviews, etc., and it'll automatically transcribe everything into text after. This has always been an amazing feature for Pixel phones, and it allows you to search through the recordings as well to get to the parts that you need. It'll try and identify different speakers by their voice and label those as well, and you can translate any of it into different languages easily. Also, it can automatically create a summary of the entire recording using the audio to figure out key points. Now, something Google came on stage to talk about at length during Samsung's event was the new circle to search feature. This essentially allows you to long press on the home button or gesture indicator if you're like me and prefer to use gestures to button navigation, and it'll freeze whatever is on the screen, including videos, and allow you to search, which is handy. But as I assumed in my S24 Ultra video, it's been announced that it's coming to other Android phones too. So it's not really something to consider when deciding on the S24 series. Okay, so all of these Galaxy AI features are actually quite useful. And I was again, pleasantly surprised at how fast they were. But there are some other Galaxy AI features that are, well, less than useful. Like chat assist with the Samsung keyboard to change the way that you're talking to sound different. Um, they have at least, since I reviewed the S24 Ultra, removed the social option, which had some weird cringy hashtag stuff. And I actually kind of think that the Shakespeare one is fun to annoy people with. Also, we have wallpaper generation that forces you to fill in gaps instead of just generating whatever you want. I'm sure that's to stop people from doing less than PG things with the feature. They're fun to be able to do, but they're probably just not that useful to most people, if we're honest. Now, something interesting about all of this is the fact that the correlations I keep making between these features and the Google Pixel devices is actually a little connected. You see, Samsung is now the first mobile partner to use Google's recently announced Gemini AI models on these new devices. Now, I won't get into it too deep, but suffice it to say that these models, which are similar to what the Pixel devices use, is what Samsung is using to create these AI features. But as we already know, Google allows any partner to use these. So expect more of these types of things with albeit different implementations to come soon from other manufacturers, I'm sure. Okay, so here is my battery usage for today and the screen on time for anyone who's curious about that. Keep in mind, it's a real world test day though, so it's not normal and I use the camera a lot more than you ever would. But here's another day that was much more normal, so you at least have something to compare it to. Now, unlike the S24 Ultra that actually went up in price this year compared to last year's launch price, the S24 Plus and S24 for that matter, pricing stayed the same. Now, as I've alluded to throughout the video, there are some changes that you might find useful or might just prefer on the S24 Plus over the S23 Plus. But as I usually would probably suggest that if you have the last phone model, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to upgrade to this one. But if you are on the S22 series, then maybe it's worth a look, especially if you can find any really good trade-in deals that Samsung is usually offering these days, which I will also try to link to the best one that I can find in the description below. But there you go. Let me know what you guys thought of my weird little format and the phone and the places we visited in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. And I think I'm actually going to go watch a movie. So, good night. Check. Meow. <laughs> Plane. Or helicopter, I don't know. <sighs> New York is basically an airport. The whole city. My favorite sound. Sirens.